We will start on Lamedam at base. Starting, it's towards the bottom. The line starts Batla. We'll start from the words for the claim the base of press. It's about 10 lines up. From the bottom. We learned in the Mishnah that you can use any food for an era. Talking about Eir of Tchumen, that's the main Eir that we're dealing with here. And we said even foods that were prohibited to the person that was making the Eir, like for example, you could use wine and the guy is a Nazar, or you could use Truma and the fellow is a, is a Yisrael. Some has argued it. Okay, now we said that a Kayan can put his Eir in a Besa Pras. Besa Pras is a field that had a grave in it, but it got plowed over. Actually, there's three types of Besa Pras, but that's the basic concept, is that there's a, uh, a field here that has a grave and it got plowed over. So the Kayan can put his Eir in there, talking about it's outside the city, 2,000 Amas, because he wants to be able to walk another 2,000 Amas from that location. It's called Kaina Shvisa. That's his, um, where he's going to be settling for Shabbos. So the Amar Rav Yehuda, Lekayim Beis Aprasi can do this. The Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Rav Yehuda says name of Shmuel. That's a famous uh, pair, Rav Yehuda, in the name of Shmuel. When a person is allowed to blow, the, the, the dirt in the Beis Aprasi and walk. You see, we have a concern that there may be a bone there. A bone would give Tumma only if he touched it. Not if not by oil. Won't give off Tumma if he goes over it. So therefore, if you're as he's walking, he looks to see if there's a bone. He doesn't make sure not to touch a bone. Maybe it's in the dirt right there, and when he steps on it, he touches. Well, he can blow that away. And even if he stepped and it was right under the layer of dirt that he that he was walking. It's not a problem because he didn't touch it directly. There was a layer of dirt in between. If, it, if the base of brass was walked on many times, so then any bone that was there was crushed and it's less than the size of a soir of a barley. So there could be pieces of bone, but it was all crushed. And then it won't make him tummy anyway, even from touching. Okay, so that's the, the heter over here. It's obviously following the opinion of Sumchas that holds that you don't accept the, the view that it's chazi lach, it's good for someone else. No, it has to be good for him. How is it good for him? How is he able to do it? Well, there are solutions how to do it. Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Aimer, Af Basic verse, Rabbi Yehuda Adas Chedesh. Yehuda says a Kayin can put his food, it's going to be Kayin of Shvisa for him, it's going to be his, acquire his residence on, uh, in, a, in an actual cemetery. That's going to be a problem. How's the Kayin going to get there? So the Mishnah said that he can go there in a box. And uh, we'll see how that works. Tana. Rabbi Yudam has basic verse in the cemetery. Tana was taught in a brice with a shechel. Lachutz, v'leilach, b'shidah teva migdal. You can go and b'shidah teva migdal, one of these types of boxes. Okay, now you have to point out that the box has to be large enough that it's not Mechabal Tumma itself. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to put it, like put him into a into an area where he won't get he won't become Tame because of the cemetery. We want him to be have a chatzitza. How's it gonna work? How's he how does he go into a box and walk? And we're talking about that it's really a wagon. So the wagon is the box. But the wagon is large enough that the wagon itself would not become tummy. Any container that's over 40 saw doesn't become tummy. It's not considered a container. It's like a large cabinet. It doesn't become tummy. So if it doesn't become tummy, 
then it could, it could be used as, a, as something that's a chatzitza between him and the cemetery that he's going in. So we go like this. I don't know why the Gemara says Tanam, it's Tanam, or just finish the Mishnah. I'm not sure. Kasavar Ayel Zarek Ayel. He holds that a moving Ayel is not considered an Ayel. I'm sorry. A moving Ayel is considered an Ayel, and therefore it protects him from the Tumah that's in the cemetery. And it's really a Machlaikis that we have somewhere else. The Tanya was taught in a Brice and Echnas Amen. Someone goes outside the land of Israel. She the table migdal in a wagon, some sort of box. Rabbi Metame, Rabbi says that he's Tame, Rabbi Yisra, Rabbi Hidda Metame, Rabbi Yisra, Rabbi Hidda says that he's Tame. So what's going on over here? Uh, apparently, the, the nations would not always bury in cemeteries. They would just bury anywhere, whatever. So as soon as he stepped across the border into one of those territories, it's like the way, probably the way the Romans would describe the barbarians, that they would, uh, they just had no, uh, nothing set up, no structure. They would just bury people, uh, whatever, just leave them there or something. So you step over the border and you're, and we don't know, you may be in a, on right above a grave. So you could be, you, you could be Tommy. So what's, what's gonna, what are you gonna do? So let's say you go into a wagon. Today would be a train. You go into a wagon, you go over, you go over the border. So it's a machlaikas. Rabbi says he's still Tommy. And Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Huda, that's Rabbi Yaisi, the son of Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Lai. He says that your tar, but my commitment, what's a machlaikas if this wagon helps? This master holds, I mean, it's Rebbe holds that an oil, a moving oil, it's a zarak means throw, thrown, but it actually means moving. Texas discusses if we're talking about when it stops or not, whatever the case is. Is it considered an oil? Omar Sava, Barbes Barbuda holds oil zarak shmei oil, and that's why he's going to be tar. If it's an oil, usually an oil is a problem. But here we're saying it the opposite. We're saying that an oil means that he's protected from the cemetery that's beneath him. We're on top of page Lamed Aleph. We're not in the cemetery anymore. Now we're dealing with a single grave. Rabbi Yehuda says that a koyen that's tar can put truma tahira, pure truma, on top of a single grave, and he can use it as a seir. There's a lot of issues here, including how did he get it there? Why, why is it still tar? And how's he gonna get it off it? Those are like a, a lot of issues that come up with this case. So, the Gemara will go through it. So, hey chiyazel, the first question is, how does the truma get there? It says Bashida Teva Migbal. You got it there in a in a wagon. It could be it was like a bridge, like an overpass. It's like an overpass over to, to this one grave. Um the Gemara says, what do you gain by that? One second, it's just one grave. But once you put it down, the food is right on top of the grave. It's mile. It's it's uh, it's right over the grave. It should make the it should become tummy. So the Gemara answers, it doesn't become tummy. This food, in order for food to be susceptible to tummy, it needs to have gotten wet. This food never got wet. It needs to have gotten wet after it was detached. Whatever it was, we said different types of fruits or whatever. Um, Oh, you should need lush of me, Paris. Let's say it's a loaf of bread. We know Wait, this. What happens in, in, uh, in uh, like Florida? So, any, like there's water under the ground. Ah. So, uh, if you remember from Elam Tzias, remember there was a Gemara, the Yesh Lamidas. Remember that Gemara? 
So in there, one of the proofs was kiyutan, remember kiyutan, that you have to appreciate that the food got wet. If you're happy about the food getting wet, that was like a little condition there. You have nothing, you remember that? No, there's, there's actually two conditions. When it comes to Tumantara, it has to be disconnected from the ground. Okay. So, so while it's connected to the ground, if it gets wet, that is not hooked through the tumor. Right. And then, even if when it's disconnected, you have to appreciate it. So you would have to be happy about it that it got wet. So what's the other option? The other option is that it did get wet and it's actually kneaded. It's kneaded with a K. Needed, it's, uh, it became a dough and it was cooked baked, but it was kneaded with May Paris, with fruit juice. There's seven liquids that could make food susceptible to tumma. An acronym for that is Yad Shachatam. Yad Shachatam. Hand slaughters blood. So Yad stands for Yayin and Dvash, wine and, and honey. Shachat stands for shemen, chalav, and tal. It's oil, milk, and dew. And dam is dam, is blood. And mayim, and water. May Paris is not in that list. So if he, if he kneaded his dough with May Paris, so this dough doesn't, is not uh, susceptible to tzumah. It doesn't have to do with hamaychi, you know, pizza with, <laughs> with apple juice, or that. that's a different story. Um, but, okay, so this is, this is where we're holding. That it is possible that I have food on top of a grave and the food is tar. How does he get it? It says, he gets it with a K. You see, the problem is if he sticks his hand over the grave, that's a problem. He's going to become tummy. So he puts a keli over it. Well, the keli is going to become tummy from the grave. And the keli is going to make him tummy because anything that's mile over a grave becomes a tummy mace, impure, off a corpse because it's a, a, a tent. He puts anything over the grave, comes tummy. And that could make him tummy. If he's tummy, he's not allowed to eat truma. A kayan tummy can't eat truma. It's the first mission in chess. He has to go to the mikveh and wait for nightfall. Um, so well, that was really to Masaguf. But uh, whatever the case is, a kind tummy can't eat shum. So how's he gonna get this and not be tummy? So we say that he's using pshute kliates. He's using some sort of piece of wood that doesn't become tummy. So therefore he's not gonna, and he'll be able to stick it over and get it. He's gonna get the food. One second, wakamal. What's the difference if it's a keli or not, if the keli is gonna become tummy? But the keli itself is going to be an oil over the, over the grave, and it's going to make him tummy when he holds it. It's a gzera, that if you hold the oil, you, you'll become tummy. The Gemara answers the Maisile, it says achire, but on the side it says achude. He's holding it by the thin edge. So he's not, it's not a tefach. It's not a tefach, then it won't make him tummy. Yachi, my time at the Rabbanan. You probably felt this coming. Once you've explained this so well, you have all the, you have every single detail worked out. That why the food doesn't become tummy. Why the person doesn't become tummy. He gets it there in this way. He, he ta- it doesn't become tummy while it's there and he takes it off. We have everything worked out. Why did the Rabbanan, you see this is, not the Rabbanon, the Mishnah Rabbanon, that I'm the Bryce. Why do they argue with Rabbi Yehuda? Rabbi Yehuda says that you can put, you can put the food on a single grave, and we have all these calculations of how it works out that it's not a problem. Why the Rabbanon say that you can't put the food on the grave for a kayan? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nothing to do with truma. Nothing to do with. The whole thing is nothing to their abundant have their separate issue. The issue is, is that you're not allowed to build a house on a grave. The grave is Isra Anna. Any, well, any part of the, of, the, of the burial place, you're really not supposed to walk on it. 
when they do a burial, they, uh, the, the kvarim are meichel each other, that you can walk over them to get to the one grave to another. But you really can't just um, lean on a, you're not supposed to, you can't have any, any benefit from anything. From the, you can't take a stone off the, uh, off the grave or, or something. You come to Asr Bana. So the Chachamim hold that you're not allowed to make your dwelling place for Shabbos. You can't be kind of Shvisa on the grave. Why did it say a Kayan? That was the Chiddush of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Huda holds that you're allowed to, he holds even a Kayan. That's what threw us off. We thought that the Rabbanan had an issue with the Kayan. It's the Rabbanan have an issue with anyone. It was the Chiddush of Rabbi Huda, the Hete, that we said Kayan. Michlal, but this would imply Rabbi Yudha Savar Mutter, Rabbi Yudha holds that you're allowed to use a grave. You're allowed to have personal benefit from a grave, really? It's Asr Bana. You say no. Rabbi Yudha Kasav Mitzvah Lehanis Nithnum. He's not having benefit. When are you allowed to make an Erev? Only if you're going for a mitzvah. You're going for some sort of simcha, simchas, uh, a simcha to hear a shir or whatever. You need to travel outside the city. That traveling that you're doing is for a mitzvah. And since Hashem gave us the mitzvahs, not for our own benefit, but just he imposed it up upon us. So any, now, anything that we do in order to be able to do those mitzvahs is not a personal benefit. So it's not, it's not a hana. So if, when I put my food over a grave, it's not that I'm getting hana, that's just allowing me to do a mitzvah, which is not a hana. This that Rebbe says that mitzvahs are not for personal benefit. It comes up in Hilcha um, Shaifer. You're allowed to use a Shaifer from something that's also about not. So, say from a, an animal that was a sacrifice or something. You're not supposed to use it for personal use. Um, it could be a little different because that could be the sound of the, well, whatever the case is. I, is the, are the mitzvahs for personal benefit or not? So Rabbi says, mitzvahs are lovely on this mitzvah. But according to what we just learned, Rabbi Yehuda holds that you're allowed to use a grave. Why? Mitzvahs lovely on this mitzvah. The Rabbanon hold you're not allowed to use a grave. Why? Because mitzvahs are lovely on this mitzvah. That's what it sounds like. Because you're not allowed to have benefits from the grave. It's a big, so it's a big problem now because Rava that made his statement is only fitting according to one opinion. Rava holds mitzvah, that mitzvahs are not there for personal benefit. Who does that fit like? Mitzvahs are not for personal benefit. It fits with Rabbi Yehuda. Let's say the Rava said his statement only according to a certain Tana, not according to everyone. Amalach Rava, Rava would say to you, doesn't mean Rava saying, it means Rava could, could respond to this. If the law was that you can only make an air of Tchumen in order to travel an extra 2,000 Amas to reach up, uh, to do a mitzvah, then the Kuliyal Mitzvah is not Everyone hold that you would be allowed to do that. Mitzvahs are not to uh, have benefit and there would be no problem. However, but to hear the machlekes is different. Mar Savrein Marvin al Dvar Mitzvah. Mar Savrein Marvin al Field Bar Rishos. Comes out, really took us on a ride, this Gemara. We thought that the issue was there's food in a, in a, in a cemetery in Ezekiah. Turns out the issue is if you're allowed to use a grave, that's not the issue. The issue is not even if you're allowed to use a grave. The issue is. Are you allowed to make an Erev for things that aren't a mitzvah? Then, if you're not allowed to make an Erev for things that aren't a mitzvah, then everyone holds mitzvahs. Mitzvahs, lovely, honest, the mitzvahs, mitzvahs, mitzvahs you, 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 you would be allowed to use the grave. But here, you're allowed to do it for other things. So that's the problem. That's the Rabbanon's opinion. However, however, Rabbi Yehuda holds that it can only make an Erev for a mitzvah. So therefore, Mitzvah Lavli Hanas Nitto, and you can even make it over this grave. El Hadam Rabbi Yisuf Ein Marvel and Bar Mitzvah. Okay, now we're getting into trouble. We just created a machlekes between the Rabbanan and Rabbi Yehuda. 
if an Erev is only made, Erev Tchumen is only made for a Dvar Mitzvah, could it be made also for personal, um, other types of things? So, the problem is, is that Rabbi Yosef made a statement. His statement was that you can only make an Erev for a Dvar Mitzvah. Only for a mitzvah, not just because you want to go to see a friend or something. That doesn't work. You want to see a teacher, or you want to hear a shir, or there's a, a wedding or something. That's a mitzvah. Wedding can be on Shabbos. Shabbos brachos. Lema ketanayim l'shmaita. Let's say the Rabbi Yosef said his statement, and it doesn't go according to all opinions. It only goes according to. It only goes according to Rabbi Yehuda. So Amalech Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef would respond to you. The kuli alma in ma'arvin al bar mitzvah. Really. In Marvin al Dvar Mitzvah, like Rabbi Huda says. With the Kuliyama Mitzvah Slav Lihana Sitnu, and everyone holds that you don't have benefit from the mitzvahs, then that's not what the mitzvahs were given for. So, what's the opinion of the Rabbanan that he can't do this? And this is the Machlaitis. Marsa will keep in the Kanale air of Nichle the Mintra. Marsa will leave in Nichle the Mintra, the Yitzchak Achalin. The question is, what type of benefit are you getting from the grave? All you need is that your kind of shvisa, the moment Shabbos comes in, do you really need to, 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 to have this food still existing later? If you need the food to exist, then you're getting more benefit from this. Why? Because you want to eat the food and it's resting on this grave. And so the fact that it's in this location is giving you some sort of benefit. But if you don't need the food at all, you only needed it to be, allow you to, to be able to travel from here to there. And Mitzvah the Hanasnit, no. So you get no benefit from the grave. The question is, are you getting an extra benefit from the grave other than that kind of shvisa that, that would allow you to travel from here to there? That's the machlaikas. It's a long, uh, a long ride along this, Kamara. What's the, what's the, the kudasa machlaikas? if you want to be able to eat the Erev later. If that's necessary. Okay, now we have a new Mishnah. Marvin Bidamai. Dmai is food that was acquired by, from an Amaretz. And we don't know if an Amaretz, um, a person, um, probably just a regular farmer, we don't know if he took his miser. We don't know if he tithed. We think he took his chuma. We, we don't know if he tithed. So the, the rule is, is that you should take, um, you should tithe again. What do you do with that tithe? Um, not necessarily. I don't think you have to give it to anyone, but you have to separate. They would have to be able to prove it. It would be a mitzvah. You see, the tithe doesn't become sanctified. It's not truma. Truma is sanctified. No one can eat it except for the kayan. The tithe goes to the levi. But it's not holy. He can sell it. He can do it. The levi can do uh, anything he wants with it. So now you have to separate the tithe. You have to give it to, to the levi. Over here, it's not really clear if you really need to do this. It could be it's a mitzvah mechaber but I, I, I don't know all the ins and outs of this. But before you eat it, you have to do the separation. That's what... Over here, it's coming from an Amar, you don't know if it was really separated. Okay, so Ma'arvim B'demai, the Chiddush, the Mishnah says, even though you're not allowed to eat it yet, but you're allowed to use it for an Arab. It's like you're allowed to use uh, non-kosher food, sort of. It's not, uh, it's not unsalted meat, let's say. You know, or something like that. Yeah, you're allowed to, so here it says, Ma'arvim B'demai, Ubemai Sirishan Shnitl Tumasi. Okay, this we're going to ask in the Gemara, what's the Chiddush? My solution means that the tithe was given to the levy, and the levy took off a tenth of a tenth, right? He, he got the tenth. He has to give a tenth to the kayan. It's called trumas miser, or it's called miser mina miser. He received his miser, and he gives miser from that, a tenth of that to the kayan. What's the chiddush? That sounds like kosher food. Let's see in the Gemara. Miser sheni vehekdish shenifta. Same applies. Maiser Shani is the food that you have to bring to Yerushalayim. Now, you're not in Yerushalayim, and you're using the food as your Arab. So what did you do? You redeem the food, and you 
put, you put the holiness of the food onto money. You take the money to Yerushalayim. Meanwhile, that food stays by you. And it's regular mundane food. And the same thing with hektish, someone sanctified food. So, but it got redeemed. So the food, the, the, these food items that were once hektish are now redeemed, now they're mundane. You're allowed to use that. The Gemara is going to ask what's the chiddush. It's regular kosher food. Ba'kayinim, it's supposed to be the chala of the The kayinim can use chala and shuma. Okay. Avalei b'tevel, you can't make an erev with tevel. That's when um, the truma wasn't removed from it. You can't use meiser that the trumas meiser wasn't taken. And you also can't use meiser sheni, the second tide, which is supposed to be brought to Yerushalayim, and sanctified foods that was not redeemed. Okay. He said, "Demai, demai is food that you're not sure if the tide was taken." Because it belonged to an Amaretz. We don't know if he was careful about this. Why is he allowed to use it? He can't eat it. The Gemara answers, Well, there's a solution here. We have a special heter that a, a poor person is allowed to eat the mind. So this person, because he has potential to be, everyone has potential to be poor. How does he have potential to be poor? He says, everything that I own is ownerless. So therefore, he has the ability to eat this. He just has to make one statement. Makes that statement that he can eat it. So therefore, this is eligible for, for him to use as an eater. So since he's able to do that, so has to so it's fit for him as well. We're not saying chazi la'achrina. That was another svara. Here we're going, even if, it's, if it needs to be chazi for him, it needs to be fit for this person to be able to eat it. He has potential. The Tanana was taught in the Machil Masaniyam Demai. You can feed poor people to my. Turn the page. Vesachsanya to my. You can also te- uh, feed soldiers. Rashi says these are soldiers, Jewish soldiers. You can feed them to my as well. But he can do this on Shabbos. He can. Uh, I mean, be mafker his thing. Yeah, mafker. I don't know. But it sounds like it's a problem with Kenyanim, right? You can't be kind of it. I don't know about being Mafka. Maybe it's different. The problem with Kenyanim was had to do with writing, right? It was too close to business. You might end up writing. I'm not sure. It sounds from this command that you're allowed to. It's a good question. Ravuna says that actually Machlekas about this. Machlekas be sul bishama, you're allowed to feed for poor people the mind. Okay, next case, Maiserishan Shinitla. He said, Maiserishan, the first tithe is given to the Levi, and the Levi took off the truma that he needs to give to the Kain. It's a tenth of a tenth. The Gemara says, Pshita. It's regular kosher food. What are you telling me? You're allowed to use it. Of course, you're allowed to use it. You know, um, we said that Jewish food was like bagels and lox or something. Then they came out that uh, one second, there's a whole shyla of bagels and lox. It's fish with cream cheese. It's a problem. It's not so simple. <laughs> so, yeah, like, what, what problem are you going to create with this? It's not, it's, anyway. But what problem are you going to create with kosher food? You have regular food. The chum, the meiser was taken. The truma was taken. What's the, what's the issue? It says, No, it's actually a shayla. This food is a problem. You see, we didn't tell you one point. We said that the truma was taken. The truma was taken from the meiser. That means the truma's meiser. When the lady gets his, his meiser, he then removes one tenth of it and he gives it to the Kayan. Before the lady gets it, the owner was supposed to take one fiftieth and give that to a Kayan. Then it's the, the, the crops, the, this grain is missing one fiftieth. He, he takes one tenth of what he has left, um, which is uh, 98 parts left. And then he takes a tenth from that. So he gets 9.8 or whatever. And he gives that to the lady. 
the lady did not want to miss out on that uh, 2%. He goes to the owner and he gets his miser before the truma was taken. And he, the lady does everything correct afterwards. He just skipped the truma being taken. He just skipped that, that one part. He just skipped the original truma being taken. He shows up at the farm while the grain is still in its, in its stalks and the truma wasn't taken. But that original truma was never, never taken. Now we have a chiddush. He's allowed to use this as regular kosher food that he's allowed to eat, even though truma wasn't taken. Like Rabbi says, name of Reish Lakish. He's entirely exempt from truma gedayla. He skipped it. He skipped it, and even afterwards, he doesn't have to take it. Shinemar, it says in the Pasuk, We have a Pasuk that says, you have to take truma, truma smicer from the miser, but you don't have to take truma gedayla from, you don't have to take the first truma from the miser, you only take the second truma from the miser. Pasuk, that exempts you. That if truma wasn't taken before, the miser was taken, you don't have to go back and take that. That's our chiddush. Amalei Rav Papa Abaya. Papa says to Abaya, why do you have to give me that case? Why do you have to tell me that you took the truma b'shibalim at that early stage? Maybe he took it from the pile. We said, Levi shows up in the field and gets his miser when the grain is still in the stalks. And truma was never taken. When is truma normally taken? When the, all the grain is put into the silo and they smooth off the top to be able to put the lid on or whatever. Then, they, um, then it's high in, in truma. But when it's still in a pile on the floor, the grain is still in a pile, you're not high in truma. Well, that, that's the point that it, I think that's the point that it becomes chayiv and shum. At that, when it's in the pile, when it's in the pile, it becomes chayiv and shum. So why are you telling me that you got the grain when it was in the stalks? You could even tell me a later stage that you got the grain when it was in the pile, but you didn't take the truma yet. You only did the miser. And the pasuk tells me that if there's no, the pasuk tells me that that if there's no, um, if the truma wasn't taken and you took you took you did the miser, you're exempt from the first truma. Why do you have to go back so far? You could start from a later stage. Where it says, Amalei Alecha Amakra, regarding your suggestion, Pasuk says, Mikom Asiseichem Trima is called Trima Sashem. Pasuk says you have to take Trima Gedayla. He asks him, Papa asks Abaya, he says, Amari Isa, what made you say that if it's in a pile, then you have to take the truma, even though you skipped it? If it's in the stalks, then you don't have to take then you don't have to take the truma because you skipped it. Like where do you get that division from? He responds, Abaya responds, Hi Hitkin Vahalayitkin. This is already considered grain. That's considered stalks. And when the Pasuk says, it says Rashis the Gancha, the first of your grain, once it becomes Chayev in Truma and you don't take the truma. Once it's called grain and you don't take the truma, then you have to take the truma later. But if it's not called grain yet, because he took it, the miser was given when it was still in the stalks, so then he's exempt. Okay, so we have a chiddush here. And that is that even though this food, the truma gedayla was skipped, but nevertheless, he's exempt from, from taking it. He's allowed to use it for his aid. Miser sheni back to shenifta. You have the second tithe that got redeemed. Or it's kaidash that got redeemed. And you're allowed to use this for your Versus pshita, it's regular kosher food. It's regular mundane food. You redeemed it. It says, When you redeem the second tithe, you're supposed to add one fifth. We add the fifth is you divide it into four and you add one of those four parts, a total of five. I have to be particular on the English. Is it, is it tithes or tithes? Uh, 
I say tides, but uh, you know, that's, uh, I guess that's a tomato, tomato. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. What's, what's anyone want to tell me the correct pronunciation? My father would know the correct pronunciation. Tithe. It's tithe? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's from the Bronx. <laughs> Can't trust it. <laughs> yeah, you have this Brooklyn, Bronx, trying to you know, pronounce English words. Pretty funny. <laughs> okay. So. More like Ole Tarunik. Uh, we're talking now about uh, you redeemed the, the Meister Shaney. You redeemed the, the, what was sanctified, but you didn't add the fifth. You didn't add that extra part that you're supposed to when you redeem your own, uh, your own items. Kamash Malan, the chiddush here is, the You can eat the food already before you add that fifth. Yet you have, you're supposed to add the fifth. The food is already eligible to be eaten. It's fit to be eaten. And that's why you can use it for your Erev. But you can't use produce that the truma wasn't taken. The says, Pshita. That's obvious. It's not kosher food. It says, No, we have a chidashe. It's a rabbinic tevel. Well, how is it rabbinic tevel? You grew grain and you didn't uh, take truma. What did you do? It says, You grew it in flower pots that don't have a hole in the bottom. It's, it's not considered like you grew it on the ground. It's only chayev and truma midrabanan. Nevertheless, it's still, you can't use it. That's the chiddush. If you have mice grape, uh, mice in the first uh, tithe, and you didn't take the truma off it, you're not allowed to use it. Moses Pshita, of course, you didn't take the truma off it. It's like, Tshicha Shekdimu Bekri. This is very interesting. Rabbi Chiddush. Chiddush is, is that you took the mice, you took the mice, the lady shows up, before it goes into the silo, but it was already in the pile. But not lamented Shumas Meiser. You took the Shumas Meiser off it. However, Lainat and Menet Shumas Gedele, but you didn't take the first Shuma. Mal the Tema Kadamale or Papala Abaya. You could have said that maybe Rav Papa asked Abaya, what's the difference over here? You should be exempt because we had a Pasuk. That says, very Meisman, Chumaser, Meisman, and Meisman. You only take Meisman and Meisman. You don't take Chuma Gedayla from Meisman once it's taken. Mashman Kedeshani Lei. The Chiddush is the way Abaye answered to Rav Papa that there's a difference if it's Idkin or Lei Idkin. If it turned into grain or not. Okay. This Gemara was self referencing. We, we reference back. The Chiddush is like Rav Papa's question. Uh, we could have thought like Rav Papa's question the answer is like a bias answer. Bring to what time the, the, the lady shows up to get his, his Meiser. Deliver Meiser Shani of Hektish Lei You also can't use Meiser Shani or Hektish. There's two cases here. Meiser Shani is the produce that's supposed to be brought to Yerushalayim. And you could redeem it. But it happens to be he didn't redeem it. And the second case is hektish. Things that were sanctified, that were given to the temple. And you could redeem those as well, but he didn't redeem it. And Mr. Street, of course he can't use it. It's not, el it's not eligible to be eaten until it's redeemed. is that you did redeem it. You just didn't do it uh, properly. You used the wrong color pen, <laughs> something like that. So you did your best. You did something, but it's, it still didn't work. What did you do? What did you do wrong? It says, shepadol gavasimai. Used a coin that didn't have a face on it. In other words, it was a blank. So the material was there. You know, it had the weight, it had the value, but it wasn't an actual minted coin. The Pasuk says, you'll wrap the money. Gemara learns from that, Kesef Sheish Levitsura, that it, it's not the tzarta that you wrap it, it needs to have a face. It needs to be a coin that's minted. It can't just, just be an uh, inkit, something that has the same value, or a blank. And also, he also redeemed the, what was sanctified. What did he do? He used property to redeem it. That doesn't count. It says you have to redeem it with money. 
So even though he did an exchange, but it wasn't good enough. That's what we're learning over here. And therefore, he can't use that produce as a zero. Okay, the next mission. Someone doesn't have the ability to go to this place before Shabbos and wait there. You could really wait there before Shabbos. Shabbos comes in and he goes back home and then the following day he can walk to his location where Shabbos was and he can go further. So what does he do? He could go and he can put his food there. Puts his food there and he doesn't even have to be there when Shabbos comes in. This person now in our Mishnah, he doesn't even have the ability to put his food there. So he sends someone else. It could be he does have the ability, he's lazy. He sends someone else. So put my food down in that little, um, uh, whatever it is, on, on that stone that's halfway in between this city and the next. This fellow, he sent it with a cheirah shayt of a katan. People that are not, don't have the responsibility. Cheirah is a deaf mute, shayt is an imbecile, and a katan is a child. Or he sent it with someone that we don't trust because the person that he sent it with doesn't believe in Erev. Who's this person? I was going to say it's talking about a Kuti. They didn't really accept everything. Okay. But let's say he has someone waiting over there to get the Erev, to get the food from the kid or from the imbecile or the deaf mute or from the Kuti that he's sending it with. There's a recipient there that's going to place it. Then Harisa Erev, then it's going to be good. I was going to ask, how does he know all those? How does he know that what happened? We'll see. Umar says, with cotton light. Can't use a cotton. Umar Ravuna cotton gave us Erev. But Ravuna says, a child can go collect the Erev. Means you do, you do trust the child in Erev. Here we said, you don't trust the child in Erev. This is like cash. Talking about two types of Erev. Because in Erev Tchumen, you don't trust the child. In Erev Chatseris, you do trust the child. What's the difference in, in this? The Erev, the Erev Tchumen needs to be placed outside the city somewhere. And when you do that, you're kind of shvisa. Something takes effect. It becomes your location. An heir of Chatseris doesn't need any sort of Kenyan. It's just that people in a one apartment complex or one area, they need to put food together to join that becomes one family. Now, you really don't need to do anything. It could be one family, even without anyone giving food. You don't, it doesn't need an action. Let's say there's partners, ever their partners. So if they're partners, they're, they anyways have some sort of something in common and they don't need to, to join together. So you don't need an action. You don't need an action, it, even if it happens automatically, like they were partners. So then you can use a child for that. So in other words, the establishment of the Erev Tchumen is a type of Kenyan that takes, that takes effect. And that you can't use a child, but the Erev Chatseris could just be, uh, could just be um, automatic and if a child works. It doesn't have to do right now with the trust. It has to do with, is a child able to accomplish that? Okay, if you put it in the hands of someone that doesn't acknowledge Erevin. Man, who is that person? Number of Chizda Kutai, it's a Kuti. I looked in the Steinlitz to see if it said something else. The, Stein, the Steinlitz has the um, unedited text sometimes. I thought it was going to say something else, but it said Kuti. Because we, we censored our own. Uh, it was going to be like an early Christian or something. Okay, if he told another person, I'm sending the Erev with a child, wait over there and get it from him and put it down on that location, then it's fine. You trust that it, that it, that it got there and everything. Else. Let's suspect that maybe he never made it. We're talking about where the guy is standing, probably on a high place. And he's able to see that the Erev got there. So Hachinami, Rav Kista said that about a different story, which we're about to learn about. But meanwhile, it's Aymed Vereyeyo. It's Hachinami Ba'aymed Vereyeyo. When I ask, Vleich HaStilma Le'Shakal Minay. 
maybe he didn't, maybe the person, maybe the person didn't do what he said he was going to do. The person said he was going to take the Arab and put it in that location. Maybe he didn't do it. This says, no, that's not an issue. Then Rabbi Chiel, if you appointed a messenger to do something, there's a chazaka, there's an uh, established assumption that he's going to do his shlichas. So, we say over here that he, this is what he set up. Where was this stated? Those two statements. Just said two statements. One is where he's standing and watching. The other one is that if a person promises, he, um, he gives his word, he's going to do it, or you appoint him to do something, that you assume that it was done. Where was that stated? Ahayatma was stated on the following statement in the Brysa. Titania, it's not in the Brysa. Nasan the lapil, vailichai, lakai, vailichai, lakai, vailichai. You put it on an elephant and you want it to go somewhere. Or you put it on a monkey, you want it to go somewhere. Ainza erif, that doesn't work. But if you told someone, meet the elephant, uh, I sent it in that direction, or meet the monkey, I sent it in that direction, or is it if it does work? Maybe he never made it there, or maybe he got distracted with other food or something. He's watching it. You know that he made it there. You went up to some uh, second floor, you're able to watch that he went out of the city and you could see that he got there. But maybe the person that you told to get it didn't really, didn't really take it and you didn't put it. No, you assume that he did do it. It's a safe assumption. You told him, he said he agreed. But it's an assumption that he accomplished what he said he would do. I'm Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman says, one second, it's not so clear. Michelle Taira. If it would be a biblical law, then ain chazaka Then we don't say that. We don't rely on the chazaka. You have to know that he did it. Shall him. But if it's a rabbinic law, then chazaka Don't trust a monkey to do a man's job. Robot. <laughs> okay. So, Rav Sheshe Samar Echazer Vachazer Chazak Ashleach Eishish Shlichus. So, this is a machlekes Rav Sheshe in Rav Nachman. If you can rely on a biblical law that the Shliach accomplished what he was, what he said that he was going to do. Let's see if we can go further. See if we can catch up a little bit because we're behind. Um, Rav Sheshis Minam Minua. Rav Sheshis says, How do you know that you can trust the Shliach even for a Daraisa? The Tanan is taught in the Mishnah. There's, there's grain, the, the, the rule is, is that grain, until the second day of Pesach, until after the first day of Pesach, you're not allowed to eat it. It's called Chadash. Um, Right? The day after the first day, then you would be allowed to eat. Um, then you'd be allowed to eat the new grain. You have to finish the old grain, basically. That's not the rule. Um, even if you have left, that's just the new grain. You can't start until the oimer is brought. Oimer is the sacrifice that was brought in the temple. The Tanan was taught in Mishnah Mishakar of Oimer. Once the oimer is brought, with our chadash, the new grain could be eaten miyad immediately for a chaykim. The people that were far away from the temple, they don't know when the Aymer was brought. So, Mutar their mutter, they can eat the new grain, probably waiting there for the new grain to be able to, you know, to start eating. From noontime. Noon but Chadash is a biblical law. How were they allowed to rely that the Kayanim brought it? According to Rav Nachman, you don't rely that someone did something unless you know about it. Is it not because there's a chazaka that the kayanim are the shluchim, and they must have accomplished their mission? So you're allowed to do it. You're allowed to eat. Rav Nachman, what does Rav Nachman say? Pasam kidiktani taima. That's a raya. Rav Sheshes, Sheshes bring a raya that you're allowed to rely on a shliach by a deraisa. 
That's not a raya over there. It says clearly, you read further. You didn't read it yet, but it says over there that the Bezdin that appoints the Kayanim to bring it is not going to be lazy, and over there it's different. Okay, let's go further. You'll see that Rav Nachman has a very strong point. Ikadamri, some said it exactly the opposite. Amr Rav Nachman, Amin Allah Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman brings a raya from this. What's his raya? The Ktani Taima. Over there it says, by the Oymer, Lepishiyoidim, Shein Bezdin Mesasim, by Bezdin Udalim Mesasim. Because we know that Bezdin is not going to be lazy, is not going to, to, um, to, to not accomplish Hashliach, but a regular person. Mesasim, by. See, you can't rely on a shlia for a deraisa. It's only the best thing that you could rely on. Rav Sheshis Hamalach. Rav Sheshis responds, Bez dinad palge the yoima. Bez din I can rely on by from chatzois. If it would have been a shliach, shliach kule yoima, I would have had to wait till nightfall. But I could rely on the shliach also. Why does it say best din? Cut the day in half to say that best din does it earlier. Best din would do it by chatzois. Amar of Sheshis Minamino, Sheshis tries again. It's going to prove. Tanya Isha Sheesha Allah Leda Eziba, Mevia Mois, when he sent us to Shev with the Velsvich House for Hutchinler. A woman that had a tumor, whether because she gave birth or because she was a sovereign, she has to bring these sacrifices. And once the sacrifices are brought, then she's allowed to eat Shuma that evening. So she goes to the basement and she, she puts the money in these little um, dishes that are there. Shaifers. Um, the Kayanim take the money and they bring the sacrifice. She doesn't know anything about it, but that's assumed that that's what's going on. The Kayanim. And she's already allowed to eat the Shuma. My time, why is she allowed to eat that evening? This is all biblical laws. And we rely that the Kayanim accomplished. Okay, it's a good raya. Rav Nachman says, That's a special story. That's the Kayanim. It's not a regular Shlia. Over there, there's a Chazaka that the Kayanim don't leave. They don't close out the, the, from the day unless everything has been spent. They take all of those coins and they bring the whatever sacrifice that was supposed to be brought. Okay. We try again. A proof. Someone tells his friend. You can collect figs from my tree. So the person can eat the figs without taking my sir. It's called a filas arai, it's a temporary eating. But if the person wants to make a whole meal out of it, then he has to take my sir. When he takes my sir, should he suspect that maybe the owner has already taken my sir? So it depends. If the owner gave him a certain amount that he should be taking, he told him, take this in this amount then it's very possible that the owner took Meiser because he knows how much the person is taking off the tree and Meiser could have been performed accurately because he gave him like a bucket. He says, take this amount. And so Meiser could have been taken. But if he didn't tell him how many he's allowed to take, then it's impossible that the owner took Meiser. So in this case here, he doesn't tell him how much to take. So if he's eating a temporary eating, then it's a chilas arai. And Meiser, if he takes Meiser, if he eats a chilas keva, then Meiser and Vada has to take uh, definite miser because it's for sure that the owner didn't take because he doesn't even know how much he, he he's taking. But if he told him Mali lach nasi, he told him fill up this basket, then Then the miser that he takes when the person is eating keva, he sits down for a meal. So take miser, then it's the When do we say that this is uh, what we're talking about, this is an Amaretz that, um, that's the owner of the field. But if the owner of the field was someone that always, always takes his Meiser, then you don't even have to take Meiser. It's for sure that the owner took Meiser. Different Rebbe, that's the words of Rebbe. Shemigamliyalai says, no, dealing with an Amaretz. But if it would be a Chavar, Eino Eichel Achyaser then you for sure have to take Meiser if it's Chavar. Why? It should be the opposite. A Chavar is someone that takes Meiser. And you're just the guest over there. And now you have to take Meiser. Why is that? There's a, a rabbinic rule 
that you're really not supposed to take Meister unless you're, it's right next to you. Why? Because you may designate part of it Meister. And someone may end up eating it because it wasn't right there. In other words, you might eat it, end up eating the Meister itself. There's, there's problems. If you're not standing right there and doing it, there's problems with it. So because of that law, Reb Shimon Ben Gamliel, who's the father of Rebbe, so Machlik is here, Rebbe and his father, says, Rebbe holds that if it's a chavar, you don't have to take Meiser at all, for sure he did it. Shimon Ben Gamliel says, no, the chavar is going to be strict and he didn't take Meiser at all, and you for sure have to take Meiser. Amar Rebbe, Neren Divrei, Dvarai Medivrei Abba. Rebbe says, I'm more correct than my father. It must be, it's better that the person would not feed um, Tevel to another person, but, he would, but he, would, he, would, he, he would rather violate that rule to take Meister when he's not standing there, as long as he doesn't feed um, to the Yamaret, to the uh, Tevel. The Gemara says like this, the home, what's the machlekes here? Would a person take meiser without, um, without being there? But everyone would agree. Everyone would agree that he would be taking Meiser if not for that issue. Why? He's considered the Shliach, the owner's considered the Shliach to take Meiser. It's a Chazaka that he took the Meiser. Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, Hasam Kedir Rav Chanina Chuzah, Dem Rav Chanina Chuzah, Chazaka, Wal Chavr Shainim Meiser Davr Shainim Mesukim Mitachas Yadai. That's a special story. That is a special Chazaka that, that uh, a Chavr would never let something that wasn't Meiser out of his um, out of his possession, he doesn't want anyone to cut, stumble over his items. Okay, so I have to stop here. It's right in the middle of something. There, we'll, we'll do that.